Alan, thank you uh, for your thank you for your service. Um, for four years, Alan has been the uh, head of our Department of Public Safety, the chairman of that commission, and and uh, he and Steve and and Nim uh, have both. Uh, we're really blessed to have uh, the three of those individuals and and uh, men and women not unlike them who uh, serve our state. And uh, so, just thank you for uh, your service. And as always, I'm honored to be among so many of you who uh, dedicate so much of your time and, frankly, your life uh, to keeping Texans safe. So that old Chinese proverb general is that, uh, may you live in interesting times, uh, certainly is true for the, for the state of Texas. And uh, we've had some of the, the most interesting disaster situations uh, in, in your line of work over the course of the, of the last few years. And uh, I think that uh, we can all agree, uh, Mayor, that that certainly is, in fact, uh, one of those uh, most interesting times. Uh, men and women in this room, uh, you do a very difficult job in um, most trying circumstances. Uh, I know I speak on behalf of all Texans when I say um, that we appreciate all you do. In a state the size of Texas, there's always a surprise or two waiting around the corner. Um, preparation is the key to everything. It's the reason that uh, you all are con constantly planning and, uh, and, and preparation for the next big hurricane or the, um, you know, with, with the hope that it never comes, but the knowledge that you know it will. Um, you constantly plan and prepare for the next major tornado that uh, we hope is years away, but we know is just around the corner. Few states have to face the fury of nature the way that the state of Texas does. The point is that the people in this room are not in the business of knowing what you're going to be responding to. You're in the business of preparing. And that takes a very special kind of mindset. It takes a dedication uh, to detail and an ability uh, to adjust plans on the fly that all too often change very rapidly. We can develop fantastic plans and try to map out all the possibilities, but even the best laid plans are worthless unless there is hard work and skill of those who have been called on to carry out those plans. Through practice and simulation and uh, repetition, we've honed one of the most effective and efficient emergency response teams in America. Truth is, there's no group of individuals I'd rather have on the other end of a phone call when we're facing that uh, monstrous level five storm. The past year, we have certainly seen those types of events. It's been a year that we're not going to forget anytime soon. Uh, the sheer magnitude of the destruction that we saw in Bastrop, near Wichita Falls, outside of San Angelo. It was a fire season that uh, I suppose has not been surpassed in modern history. I remember heading over to Bastrop last fall, seeing that great wall of, of, of smoke from one horizon to the other. It was consuming the horizon as far as you could see. More than 1,300 homes were destroyed in the Bastrop fire alone. Tens of thousands of acres. Statewide wildfires destroyed more than 5,000 structures, almost 4 million acres of our state. For all of the homes lost and the businesses destroyed, the ranches that were consumed, the amazing part is that it could have been a lot worse. More than 39,000 homes in the direct line of those fires were saved. But at the rate those fires were spreading, the damage could have been substantially more widespread and the citizens of our state and the loss of life could have been substantially higher. Holding the line between the flames and those communities were the courage and the conviction of many of you in this room. There were the men and women on the ground, the first responders. 
local officials and volunteers, Texas military forces, various state agencies, as well as our federal counterparts. Each had a role to play. Each had a part of the plan. And each is as valuable to the other in making sure that those plans are executed as efficiently and effectively as they can be. Of course, we need to have the right equipment in place as well. And unfortunately, there's a plan brewing in Washington, D.C. right now, General Nichols, that uh, puts Texas and I think the southern United States in jeopardy. Part of a redeployment plan, the Air Force is considering relocating the eight C-130s that are at the 136th Airlift Wing in Fort Worth to Montana. I don't have to tell anyone in this room how important those aircraft are to emergency efforts, not just in this state, but in the entire southern region of the United States. Those C-130s were the first to arrive in New Orleans in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, carrying much needed supplies and assistance. They were critical in our preparations for Hurricane Ike and Hurricane Gustav, helping evacuate some 800 citizens. They were hospital patients in New Orleans just prior to the landfall of, of Gustav. In fact, since 2005, these planes have flown 423 storm response sorties in Texas and along the Gulf Coast transporting more than 3,000 passengers, delivering 939 tons of emergency supplies. And as long as they're in Fort Worth, they can be deployed within hours to any place along the Gulf Coast with a simple phone call. You move those assets to Montana, and they're going to be desperately out of reach in times when we literally only have minutes to spare. Now, I've had my fair share of disagreements with Washington from time to time, um, but this suggestion ranks right up there with one of the worst ideas I've seen come out of Washington. My fellow Gulf Coast governors, our congressional delegations, will continue to fight to keep those planes where they are, where they can meet the needs of this region in Texas and beyond. But we all know that the disaster business, our work is never done. Uh, with all the preparation and the practice and the repetition, uh, but we all know that in the disaster business, um, we have to prepare and prepare and prepare. Prepare for that next hurricane. Uh, I'm not sure how we prepare for the, for the ongoing drought. Uh, I tell people, even though we've had you know, wonderful uh, rains this spring and the, and the blue bonnets and the Indian paintbrush and others are out uh, uh, and putting a glorious coat on to Texas. We're still in the throes of a drought and the preparation continues and the tornado season is just around the corner. As a matter of fact, uh, what Nelson, just in the last couple of weeks uh, we had uh, just over at Divine um, and we still got a rather substantial chunk of season to go. And unfortunately, um, you know, as, as I said, living in the desert southwest, uh, we kind of live between uh, periods of uh, nice rains uh, interspersed with uh, extended periods of drought. So um, look for another outbreak of wildflower fires this summer as we, uh, as we go through the rest of this year. The men and women in this room know better than anyone that our success at responding to all these types of disasters is a direct result of the continuing concept of adapting and refining our system and our refusal to, to take anything for granted uh, or accept anything but the best. This conference, as always, reflects a golden opportunity for all of you to reflect on last year uh, to figure out what worked well, to discuss what didn't work so well, and what lessons can be learned. It's an opportunity for us to renew our commitment to deepening our cooperation with authorities, whether it's at the federal level all the way down to the local level. 
those who truly understand what the communities need in times of crisis, which is generally those individuals right at the local level. The best way to distribute our resources, it's an opportunity to expand our communication abilities, which are already a major focus in a disaster planning effort. In short, this conference is an opportunity to make everything that we do that much better, which results in getting disaster victims the things that they need much faster, deploying those critical resources to save lives that much more efficiently. I've said it before and I'll say it again, our emergency management team is the best in the world. And I want to thank all of you for being here today. Thank you for making Texas the best place in the world to live and to raise a family, to own a business. It's the best place to live when disaster knocks on your door. Because of men and women like you, who are absolutely the best trained, the best prepared, use this conference as an opportunity to express your opinion. <laughs> I don't think that is a problem for most of you. Um, and, um, but it's, it, making your positions known is really important. As you've seen, particularly those of you at the local level, as you respond back up to, uh, to the state and our federal counterparts. Um, you know, call attention to the concerns that you have uh, so that they can best be dealt with now and not when we're uh, staring down a Category 5 storm uh, off the coast of, uh, of Houston, Texas. And again, I just want to say the state of Texas thanks all of you for what you do. Uh, I'm blessed to be able to uh, be associated with men and women of your caliber and uh, what you do makes a difference in your citizens' lives. So with that, let me say God bless you, and through you may God continue to bless the great state of Texas. Thank you.